I sent Hannah like uh, four uh, videos of you giving a new introduction and some of the chapter markings and some of the edits that you would like to see done. And she's working on that. So we praise God for Hannah. And um, uh, she, she said she's going to take, take that on as a project. And uh, as soon as we get the new updated version, we'll, we'll get that mailed to you right away so you can look at it. And then, uh, you know, give your final go ahead to, to replace it on Lulu or um, if you want to make further edits. So, yep. And uh, I do have some Bible questions if you have time. And uh, were you planning on uh, giving a, a, either a sermon or a, a Bible study for tomorrow? It's your call if you if you do or you don't. I was. I'm ready, but I was going to do it tomorrow morning. Yes. Unless you guys got, you don't go to church until like 1030 or so. Oh, yeah, yeah. we got plenty of time. So that sounds great. I just wanted to make sure that, um, you know, check in. So, no, that, we look forward to that. And um, if you want, I'll get into some Bible questions. Okay. Yeah, I've got about 45 minutes here, and the phones are free. Very good. All right. Um, the first question I have is, uh, you mentioned this Alexander Solzhenitsyn guy, and I've looked him up, and he wrote something called the Gulag Archipelago. Is there other books that you would recommend? Because we're always looking for good books around here that he wrote that you would recommend. That's the only one of his I read, and it was incredible. It's like 900 and some pages, but man, it's all about, well, an archipelago, archipelago, arca, arca, whatever you call it, <laughs> oh, of islands, a, a string of islands, like coming off the tip of Alaska, there's a whole long string of islands. Uh, gotcha. Archipelago. Okay. The gulag is the prison system in Russia. So he says there's a whole string of prisons across this country. So that's the title of his book. It's about all these crazy prisons. And ah. We're doing exactly the same thing here in America. Very good. Okay, I'm, I'm going to... Following gonna... the lead of the rush. No, no, that's that's very interesting. And I, I've heard the name of that book, and I know that it was quite popular. I've just never read it. So uh, now that you've recommended it, I've got a new new book to go read. So praise God for that. All right. Uh, the next question comes in from uh, Tanisha. And here's what Tanisha writes. Um... I recently wrote Dr. Hovind a letter. I'm now watching one of his videos on YouTube and the Creation Seminar number six. He wrote me saying to email you with any questions. My first question is, when will he post the video answering my question about the Bible and the lizard braid, B-R-A-I-D, but she might have meant brain maybe? Uh, he said he will label, label it to... The brain, right. The oh, lizard brain, okay. And then she, she finishes up. She says... Uh, uh, he, he said it will label it Tanisha and my name, by the way, and thank you for getting back to me. Okay, yes, thank you. I did that tell her to be quicker for me. I talk a lot faster than I write. I type 12 words a minute with 19 mistakes, and so, but I can talk awfully fast. What the evolutionists have done... This call is from the Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office. <laughs> what the evolutionists have done for oh, over a century, I guess, is they have said there are different types of brains in the different animals. There's a lizard brain... There's a mammal brain, and there's the human brain, and they have different sections, which is all true. You can study that in biology or anatomy class, the different types of brains on the planet, okay? And some are missing certain parts. Uh, actually, I've met some people that seem to be missing some parts, too, but that's a different story. So the evolutionist argument is that uh, if you just look at the word farm, F-A-R-M, they will say fish evolved to ram uh, amphibians, amphibians to reptiles, and reptiles to mammals, F-A-R-M. And they'll say that's, that's one of the evidences for that sequence of so-called evolution is the different types of brains because new parts of the brain are added as evolution takes place, according to their stupid theory. Well... <clears throat> The fact is, each animal has the type of brain it needs to do what it does for its little world. I mean, it's every animal is perfectly suited. They were designed. They were created that way. There is no connection. And the lizard brain, I forget which sections they're missing, uh, uh, compared to the, the human brain or even the mammal brain. But if you uh, go to the ICR, Institute for Creation Research, ICR, Rudy, maybe you can check and see if it's .com or .org. I think it was .com for years, and they changed it, but I don't know. Anyway, okay. there's Dallas there. <laughs> and <clears throat> they have some great articles, and I think even a whole book on that topic of the, the lizard brain. So I would steer you to them if you really want to go down deep. But the basic idea behind this in a typical textbook is they'll say, oh, see, look, the lizard only has these sections of the brain, and the uh, mammals have these sections. Aha, that proves we evolve farther. 
No, that proves the creator designed it. You can buy the general uh, Ford, and then you can buy the fancier Ford, which has extra additions, you know? In the old days, you could buy cars, and then you could buy cars with air conditioning and radio. <coughs> My brother had an old Volkswagen he was so excited about. It, he said it has an AM, PM radio. <laughs> AM, PM, I like that. In the morning, works in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. As opposed to AM, opposed to AM FM. But I remember the days when it was a big deal to get an AM, FM radio. Whoa, now you really got an upgrade. And then AM, FM, 8-track. Oh, man, that was a cat's meow. So... The evolutionists are all excited because the different types of brains on the planet, and they've got them arranged in some kind of order that they think they evolved in, when it proves nothing of the, no, no, it's no evidence for evolution. It's proof the designer gave each creature what it needs to do what it does. <clears throat> so this is absolutely silly as far as evidence for evolution, and a classic example of evidence for a designer. Anyway, Tanisha, I hope that helps. If there's more detail, if you can send me the actual page from the textbook you're looking at, or photocopy it and send it to me. I'll be glad to give more detail. But uh, since I'm a little hindered right here with uh, research <laughs> capability, you might want to go to icr.org, or uh, you can even call. If you call and talk to Frank Sherwin, S-H-E-R-W-I-N, he works at ICR. He's a good friend of mine, uh, genius guy. And his, uh, his degrees are in biology, and he would be an expert to answer that very question. Frank Sherwin in Dallas there at ICR. Okay. No, thank you, Pastor Hovind. I did check, and it is icr.org, O-R-G, so uh, that's that's the proper one. Okay. All right. No, very good, Pastor Hovind. Here's the next question. It comes from Mark in Belfast, Ireland, and he's a good brother in the Lord. Uh, we always love to hear from Mark. Uh, he writes, uh, Hello, Pastor Hovind. Me and my wife's eyes filled with joyful tears, knowing that Sean was lonely, but now things are changing because God has uh, many ways in helping the helpless and he sounded incredibly positive on the phone for him to be with God and his army of light now. I am doing an essay writing and needs to be completed by Tuesday, and it's based on Sean. And I am going to be reading it out, uh, out of my 45 students again, and I will let you know how that goes. Uh, one of the questions for Dr. Hovind, uh, please, is in the book of Revelation 5.13, And every creature was in, which is in heaven and on earth, do animals go to heaven? My wife is worried, sick, that we might not see animals in heaven because she loves God's creatures. Blessings and prayers from Ireland and Belfast, Brother Mark. Excellent question. I read a story of a little girl. She was crying because her cat got run over. And her mom said, but honey, Fluffy's up in heaven with God now. And the little girl said, well, why would God want a dead cat? <laughs> So uh, I don't see any way to prove it. I don't see any way to prove it one way or another. But I do know that when we come back uh, from heaven with Jesus, we'll be on white horses. Oh, so obviously, if there's horses there, why not all other kinds of animals? Right. Uh, I see no way to prove it one way or the other. But I, I suspect since heaven's going to be perfect, I think it's going to be a whole lot more like Earth than people. This call is from the Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office. We got these far side cartoons and stuff, putting this image in our mind of everybody floating around, you know, playing a harp and living on a cloud and wearing a white robe and nothing else to do. And it's just not that way. I think it's going to be very much like planet Earth, uh, probably animals and everything. So we'll have to see on that. Don't know. All right. No, thank you, Pastor Hoven. The next question comes in from Max, uh, M A X. And I got to say, there's so many people in the background, uh, Pastor Hoven, that are just working their tails off that hardly ever get mentioned. And uh, when you get out, uh, there needs to be like a big celebration party for you, uh, you know, being uh, being free from prison. And all of these people that have uh, contributed, you'll get to meet and shake their hand directly. But Brother Max is one of them. He's doing a whole lot of work in making sure that uh, your videos are, uh, you know, saved in various different spots. So we praise God for Brother Max. But he writes, uh, are tattoos taboo for a Christian? And he has a second question as well. The only reference to tattoo, tattoos is in Leviticus chapter 19. God gave in his law to the Jews, don't make any marks on your flesh. He said, don't make any cuttings in your flesh, nor print any marks upon you. I think it's Leviticus 19, 28 or 29, somewhere in there. Uh, now, that's a commandment to the Jews, not necessarily to the Gentiles. Under uh, Acts chapter 15, uh, they, argued, they argued about, okay, what laws apply to these new Gentile believers? And they had a big argument in Jerusalem, and they finally settled on which laws apply to the Gentiles. So, 
I can't think, I, I wouldn't say that we're under that law, but the fact that God said that to the Jews in Leviticus 19 indicates that's the way God feels about it. <clears throat> the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So I don't have any tattoos, and unless somebody forces one on me someday, we'll not ever have one. Uh, and I'm in a room where the guys get them all the time. I mean, they do it to each other constantly, you know. Uh, they're loaded with them. And so I, I think it'd be wise not to. If you have some, it's not the end of the world. Uh, they won't bury you in a Jewish cemetery, I don't believe, if you have a tattoo. But <clears throat> uh, who cares? So I, I think it'd be unwise to get one. I think the body's the temple of the Holy Spirit. There are certain things you should not do with your body just simply because it belongs to God. There's a story of a guy riding in a train years ago, and this gambler sitting across the table from him, and he said, hey, would you like to play some poker? And the guy said, I can't, I don't have any hands, because he's held holding his hands down on his lap under the table. Oh, I'm sorry, oh, I'm sorry, you don't have any hands. And so a little later, he reached in his pocket to get something, and the gambler said, hey, I thought you said you didn't have any hands. He said, oh, these aren't mine, these belong to God. <laughs> There you go. A good, way to, good way to look at your whole body. This, this, this really belongs to God. I can't do that. You know. So I would certainly advise against it, but if you do, it's, it's not the end of the world. Okay. All right. No, thank you, Pastor Hoven. Uh, Max's second question is, are female pastors biblical and why? Well, you have to define what you mean by pastor. If you look at 1 Timothy chapter 3, Paul said, <clears throat> if any man desire the office of a bishop... And if you look up the word bishop or bishopric, it's pretty obvious that's the pastor of the church, the head pastor. And so Paul is telling young Timothy, here's protege, the qualifications for the pastor, for the bishop of the church, for the leader. He said the bishop then must be the husband of one wife, clearly indicating it has to be a man. Now, as I understand it, from 1 Timothy and again from Titus, where he gives commandments about the, how churches should be run, the pastor must be a man. <clears throat> now, can the assistant pastor or the youth director or the choir director, on and on and on, I don't see any scripture against a woman doing any of those things, but to me it looks pretty clear from 1 Timothy 3 that the pastor has to be a man. Now, I know churches where they have a woman pastor and they do things for God. I don't fight them at all, but I don't think it's scriptural. Uh, like I said, I wouldn't say it's the end of the world, and Sometimes, if you read through the book of Judges, you'll see God couldn't find a man, so he used a woman, like Deborah. Uh, and there was a prophetess in the, in the Bible. Um, I forget her name now, but you can look up the word prophetess in a uh, uh, concordance and find out where the... Uh, maybe there's two references to that. So certainly, God can use women. They're oftentimes smarter than men. Uh, certainly more uh, tougher in some instances, able to handle. I couldn't handle having a baby. You kidding? I'd commit suicide. <laughs> uh, yeah. You have 60 seconds remaining. <laughs> but, there's, but Eve was deceived. First Timothy chapter 2 is pretty clear. Adam was not deceived. Eve was tricked. And part of the curse on Eve in Genesis 3 was, hey Eve, because you did this, Adam's the boss. Adam's the head of the family. That was not the case until Eve sinned. Mm. So you can read Genesis 3 about the different uh, curses based on what they did wrong. And that was part of it. Man's in charge. I think it's the same with the church. It needs to be a man pastor. Amen. Okay. You need me to call? You got more questions? Yes, sir. We have a few more if you want to call back for one more time. Uh, I'll do it. Okay. God bless. All right. That's Pastor Ken Hovind, uh, April the 11th, 2015. And uh, we'll stop this and upload it. Global Tell Link, update call from Ken Hovind. An inmate at the Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office. This call will be recorded and monitored. Your advance pay account balance is $29.22. For customer assistance, billing inquiries, or to block future calls, dial 1-877-650-4249. To hear the cost of this call, press 8 now. To accept this call, press 5. This call is subject to monitoring and recording. Do not use three-way or call waiting features during this call. Thank you for using Global Tail Link. All right. All right. No, thank you, Pastor Hovind. I looked that up while uh, you were calling back. I think it might have been Prophetess uh, Anna. Was that, that sound ring a bell? Yes, that rings a bell. Huh? Okay, very good. Also, um, Randall said uh, he missed your call, and if you want to call him back, 
uh, later today, uh, he, he'll be he'll try to be by the phone. So he 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 been talking oh. to my wife. So okay, sounds great. Okay, uh, the next the next uh, email comes in from Sister Agapi. Uh, at least that's her email address, and she writes. Um, Attached is a book called The Evolution of Man, Scientifically Disproved by Reverend William A. Williams, written in 1925. And just to let you know, uh, Pastor Hovind, we printed that off, and that's headed to you. Hopefully we'll get to you uh, sometime early next week. Uh, it says, please ask Brother Hovind if he has read it or if he knows about it. I think it is good, and it seems to be written by a man much like Brother Hovind. Maybe you would like to put it up on your site so that others can read it too. Here are, here are a few links where people can read the book. And then she gives a few links. Uh, keep encouraged. I'm praying for Pastor Kent Hoven and Paul. Um, I enjoy listening to Brother Kent speak. Please continue to stand for the truth. Tell Brother Kent we're praying for him and to tell him to remember the song, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Thank you. Blessings. Agape. John 15, 5. You can read this email to him if you like. And we just did. <laughs> so. Amen. I am not familiar with the book by uh, Reverend Williams from 1925, but ever since Darwin wrote his book in 1859, uh, there have been people who have opposed uh, the evolution theory. Uh, there was Bishop Wilberforce in the famous debate there with Thomas Huxley back in the 18, whatever it was, 70s or something. Uh, so, yeah, there have been plenty of people. There have always been opposition uh, to Darwin, both from the Christian community and from the scientific community. Uh, there was a great opposition to Darwin from the scientific community right from the beginning. Now, they've pretty much been silenced by various means, but <clears throat> I've not seen it. I would love to see it. I think that uh, many of the early Christians, like 1925, that's when the Scopes Monkey Trial was held in Dayton, Tennessee, commonly called the Scopes Monkey Trial. Tennessee passed a law that said you cannot teach. Now, what was the law? They said uh, you have to teach creation. I forget the wording of the law. But the ACLU, the American Communist Lawyers Union, uh, wanted to challenge that law. <clears throat> now, they lost the case, but they won in the, in the uh, public relations end. They won um, in the media, which I think, with, same with my case here, win or lose this case, I think there's enough media attention that the government is losing in the public opinion. What they did to me is just simply wrong. You don't lock a man up for 10 years for, for what? We're taking your money out of the bank. This is it's dumb on multiple levels. Not criminal at all, and I think the whole thing is, so win or lose, I think the public opinion, and Rudy, you could probably see that, you could hold that, take that temperature better than I could, but it looks like there's certainly people are, are understanding this whole case was dumb from the start. Yes, amen, there's a lot of well, people waking up. Your question. Yeah, to answer Agape's question, I've not seen the book, I would love to see it, and thank you, I appreciate it. I will point out that probably, <coughs> Since 1925, many thousands of new evidences have come up against evolution. Uh, and the groups that keep up with that, the latest research, ICR.org, for instance, uh, Answers in Genesis, they have whole staffs of people that are working to keep up with the latest research against this dumb theory that we all came This call is from the Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office. 4.6 billion years ago. So whatever Williams had, I'd love to see it and just point out that a lot more has been added since then. All right, thank you. All right, no, thank you, Pastor Hovind. Um, so this next qu uh, next email comes from Andrew, and I didn't get his uh, permission to say his last name, so we'll just call him Andrew. He says, Andrew from Sydney, Australia, who is also praying for Paul J. Hansen. I used to work on two websites as a webmaster a few years back, along with 2peter3.com too. I have spoken to Paul many times over email slash Skype, and he was a very nice man. Uh, Paul always spoke highly of Kent and probably one of the best people to know in prison as he knows a lot about the law. Uh, thanks, Rudy. So a Andrew just wanted, I think, uh, you to receive that message. And uh, I don't know if uh, that rings a bell, but it looks like he used to even work on uh, 2 Peter 3. It did. I know his last name, and I had to tell him thank you. I was wondering if he was still alive down under over there. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to, I, tr I was over there for like a week in Australia in a very difficult language to learn. Uh, I thought I spoke English till I went over there. See, it was, uh, my wife is, and I were standing there in the church, and the piano teacher walks up, and she's got her little five-year-old son, and she says, Mrs. Hoven, would you please nurse my son? <laughs> the wife looked to her with, like, excuse me? Excuse me. <laughs> that's okay, that just means, 
That just means babysit. Ah, uh, there you go, but there you go. Well, I was at the restaurant, and I said to the waitress, I said, ma'am, could, could, could you please give me a napkin? And the preacher elbowed me and said, don't ask for that. I said, why not? He said, that's a diaper over here. I said, oh, what do I want? He said, you want a serviette? <laughs> oh, okay, I'm sorry, give me a serviette. So I thought I spoke English till I met the Australians, and I, I, don't, I don't think we speak the same language. But Andrew, thank you for all the help you've been. Please keep spreading those. And if you have any ideas on making the website go more viral, get a hold of Randall. Uh, the webmaster of 2 Peter 3. Uh, I want it. He's got it backed up in 100 places, and uh, uh, just help him any way you can. Thank you. And uh, Paul and I are roommates together now, finally, after all these months. So we, I'll, I'll tell him if you, uh, you contact us. Thank you. No, very good. And uh, Andrew will be, be glad to hear that. Uh be glad to hear your message. So praise God for Aunt Andrew. All right. Uh, the next question comes in from Amy. And uh, Amy has a lot of questions about marriage. And I'll just uh, begin to read it. We have been hearing about so many people living together uh, that say we are married because we made a covenant with each other. What constitutes a marriage? This is what a friend just emailed us. Are there any other, are there any other options? It is obviously more than sex. But what? And then she has four questions. The first question is... Are two people married when they solemnly commit to to be love each other forever? That's she has four questions, and that's her first question. Uh, I, I'm not the one to ask that question. Uh, I don't know. There there are legal ramifications. You have to wonder why is the state involved in this at all? Who what, what business does the state give permission to get married? <clears throat> that's what a marriage license is from the word licentious. I think the other option to look at it is, no, no, you can notify the state. There was no such thing as a marriage license in America until after the Civil War. Abe Lincoln didn't have a marriage license. George Washington didn't have one. They had a marriage covenant, and often they had a ceremony at the church, kind of more traditional. Uh, what did Adam and Eve have? You know, What did Noah and his wife have? I don't know. Uh, so I, I'm not the one to answer. There's people who make a big deal out of that. And, um, I think if you get married, you make a marriage covenant, which used to be just both of you sign the front page of the family Bible, and then you go notify the county, hey, we're married. You don't ask them if you can. You tell them that you did. They have a right to kind of keep track of who's with who. And, of course, if children are produced, then there's got to be some legal ramifications of, well, what if the dad doesn't support them? Now what? Or the mother doesn't support them? Now what? So <clears throat> it's a complicated issue, and I'm not the one to answer that. Maybe Paul could do that. I'll get a hold of him and ask him his thoughts on that. No, very good. Thank you, thank you, Pastor Hovind. Uh, I've got a friend who, like I think I've mentioned him to you before, uh, called Tommy. He's a mixture between Moses and Santa Claus, but... Uh, he seems to think uh, that the biblical definition of marriage is, is simply sex, that when a man and woman get together and uh, they've married each other when they commit the act of sex. So uh, I don't know if that's uh, true or not, but I've heard, I've heard arguments uh, of, you know, along those lines as well. Um, but uh, like you said, we'll, we'll leave that up for others. Uh, if, and maybe uh, at some point, if, if, um, if Amy wants to write you a letter, maybe uh, you can pass that along to Paul as well. Okay, I'll move on to the next email, sir. Uh, the next question is... Um, from Stan, and Stan writes, Dear Dr. Kent, I was wondering if you if you knew what cryptozoology was and if you would recommend any books on the topic. And he has a follow-up question as well. I do know what cryptozoology is, and there are many good books on the topic. Crypto means hidden, or not, not easy to see, uh, like a... a Cryptic language is written that's hard to, hard to, so crypto means hidden. Zoology is the study of animals. So cryptozoology would be the study of animals that are hidden or rarely seen. Uh, for instance, Loch Ness Monster is considered part of cryptozoology. Study an animal that uh, nobody's really proven, rarely seen. Uh, there are many good books on the topic. You might want to get a hold of Dennis Peterson in uh, Portland, Oregon. <coughs> I don't remember his website. Uh, Dennis Peterson, Portland, Oregon. He's a pastor of a Nazarene church there. If you contact my son, Eric, he can get you his contact info. He has written many good books on the subject of cryptozoology. The book that I wrote, uh, well, the first book I wrote, actually, back in 99, was Claws, Jaws, and Dinosaurs. Co-authored it with William... Uh, gee whiz, I haven't talked to William in 20 years. Uh, He's up in Canada, too. Anyway, look, at, get that book. He, William has done a lot of research and actually has taken four trips to Africa, to the Congo, 
looking for locally Mbembe, the hidden dinosaur that apparently is still alive in the swamps in, in the Congo and Africa. So uh, get that book, uh, uh, Claws, Jaws, Dinosaurs, or contact my son, Eric, and ask for the information about how to get a hold of William now. He was in Canada, but he's, he's, he's done a lot more research. There's another one, uh, a man named Dave uh, Wetzel, W-O-E-T-Z-E-L, up in uh, Concord, New Hampshire. <coughs> Dave Wetzel is a friend of mine. He has a book, Genesis, or a website, Genesis Park. I think it's .com or .org. But David has done many uh, trips, uh, cryptozoology. He, he's one of the leading researchers in cryptozoology, I would say. So he would know the latest. I've been locked up eight and a half years and haven't seen a computer. So uh, David Wetzel or Dennis Peterson or William, I'll think of the last name in a minute. Like I said, I haven't talked to him in 20 years. But, um, but he co-authored the book with me, uh, uh, the Claws, Jaws, Dinosaurs, which we wrote for like seventh grade level introduction to the subject of cryptozoology. Okay, hope well, that helps. No, thank, thank you, uh, Pastor Hoven. And it is uh, Genesis Park dot, I think it's dot com. So uh, I have not, I've never seen that website before. Okay. I, I, I'll, I'll look forward to checking that out. Also, I need to say that I misidentified uh, it being from Stan. Uh, it was This email is not from Stan. It's from Isaac in, in Louisiana. So I, I misidentified that. He also has a follow-up question. And Isaac's follow-up question is, uh, says, Also, my dad was wondering in the context of Daniel 9, 24 through 27, uh, it is... Is it, is it talking about Isaiah's suffering servant who must be cut off from the land of the living so that many might be justified, as, as in Isaiah 53, 8 through 11? So why do, people make, why do people mistake Christ for the Antichrist in Daniel 9, 27 when he, in verse 27, has to refer back to the anointed one, Christ, in the previous verses? And I, I can read that again slower. If I can hear with me to look, but I... Well, I think I think the he in Daniel nine twenty seven is the Antichrist. I think if you read the whole chapter, he is going to make a covenant with many. I think that's the Antichrist making a treaty with many people that allows Israel to rebuild their temple. Uh, and I cover that in my book, uh, What on Earth is About to Happen. If you uh, check that in uh, section four uh, A, <clears throat> appendix four A of my book, I believe. I go through all the details of why that has that he has to be Antichrist as opposed to Christ. Um, I know there are those who teach it is the Christ, but the reason we say the temple has to be rebuilt is because in the middle of that week, which is obviously a heptad or a seven-year period, in the middle of that seven years, he, he breaks the treaty and puts up an image in the temple. <clears throat> well, there is no temple right now, so they have to have a temple built to be able to, to desolate it. It's called the Abomination of Desolation. This call is from the Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office. Uh, Mark 13, Luke 21, uh, quite a few places in the Bible it talks about this abomination that maketh desolate. That happens in the middle of the seven-year period. So, uh, yeah, I'll stick by my guns. and believe, uh, I believe the he. I'm willing to listen to other arguments, but I think I've heard them all. And I still stick by my guns that the he is the Antichrist, not Christ. Okay. Okay. No, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Hovind. Also, that William, I looked it up real quick, and Claus Jaws, uh, that was William J. Gibbons. Gibbons, yeah, I just thought of it. Well, I can't <laughs> believe I forgot his name. You'll find out when you get old. Okay. Yeah, amen, amen. Uh, all right, the next, the next question comes from an atheist. And the atheist... 60 seconds remaining. The atheist writes, and you can, you, you, we can answer this later, but I'll go ahead and read it. Has any creationist ever seen the original copy of the Bible? Then, If not, then how do you know what it really said? <laughs> Well, has anybody seen the original copy of any ancient book written 2,000 years ago? Amen. No, they're all gone. It's obvious. The copies are fine. If the original still existed, somebody would be worshiping the paper instead of worshiping the God it writes about. So I think God in his wisdom made sure the original is not preserved. So nobody puts it in a gold box and marches it around town and makes everybody bow down. So, Amen. You know, I, a lot of people saw the originals, but nobody alive today. Has, has anybody alive today seen Abe Lincoln? Uh, <laughs> oh, I know he existed. Well, <laughs> Great answer. Anyway. All right. Thank you, brother. I'll call back later on. Okay. God bless, Pastor Robin. Right, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. All right, that was Pastor Hovind. It's always a pleasure to do Bible questions with him. I do need more Bible questions. <laughs> you know, I'm try I always try to be prepared when he calls. And also, I need more creation evolution questions. Those are the preferred choices. 
Yeah, yeah uh, R-U-D-D-A-V-I-S at yahoo.com. Give me some creation evolution questions. We have 36 days, 14 hours, 5 minutes. And every call is precious, and we want to uh, do as much as we can to make noise, shine light, and uh, to raise public awareness about Ken Hovind's situation. We got an innocent man in prison, and they're trying to put him in prison. For for customer assistance, billing inquiries, or to block future calls, dial 1-877-650-4249. To hear the cost of this call, press 8 now. To accept this call, press 5 now. To decrypt this call. This call is subject to monitoring and recording. Do not use three-way or call waiting features during this call. Thank you for using Global Tail Link. Hey, Brother Hovind here. You getting sick of me calling you? <laughs> no, no, never, never. Uh, how you, how you doing today? I'm doing great. We've got uh, free time and the phone's open, so I thought I'd give you a call. Very good. No, we got uh, more Bible questions. If you like, we can jump into that. And um, um, I, that, 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 that sounds like a good idea to you. That sounds wonderful. Okay. okay. Very, very good. All right. Uh, we got a Bible question that came in from Agape. And she writes, um, if you could please read this to Brother Hovind, I'm interested to know how he'll respond. Thank you and God bless you, Agape. Uh, dear Brother Hovind, Hovind, we listened to your answers to Al about Satan and the Garden of Eden. You said as far as a third of the angels uh, following Satan, the only way I see anybody get that number is from Revelation, which may even be the future. I think it's probably correct. People have always taught a third of the angels followed Satan, but I can't see where they actually got that from. That one reference seems to be the future, did, but did sin. I think maybe Adam brought sin into the world, Sa uh, Satan brought it into heaven, and was actually, he wasn't kicked out, he's still up there. He still has access to heaven, but he could still go up there, and he's an accuser of the brethren, but he will be kicked out one day, banished to earth, that's not coming soon enough for me, but it's coming. Um, so, it says, Our family looked at Revelation 12 passage like this. Uh, the woman this passage talks about seems to be Mary, who gave birth to Jesus, who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. Verse 5. God protected and fed her. Verse 6. Uh, this is quite a long, que quite a long question. Um, God protected and fed her in Egypt. The war in heaven, verse 7 through 10, we believe this happened to keep Jesus from being born or while Jesus was still on earth. This call I, is from the Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office. I think this may be what Jesus is talking about in John twelve thirty one. Now in the judgment of this world, now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Read the whole passage in context. Uh, God and Christ have won the victory and the accuser of the brethren is cast down. He's working here on the earth now, trying to get as many to follow him and not God as possible. Verse 17. He, he has gone to make war with the remnant of the woman's seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is the stage and time we are in now. Those in this and in times that started with Christ's time on earth overcome through verse 12. Verse 11 is a key practical verse. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not the lives unto, de unto death. It is a very interesting passage. We believe that the war in heaven already took place before while Jesus Christ was on earth. Now the accuser of the brethren has been demoted from his place in heaven, and instead of accusing us day and night before God, Jesus Christ is at the right hand of God interceding for us. What a, con what a contrast, what an encouragement, what a victory has been won. We are praying for you, sincerely Agape. So, uh, Was that a question? I don't know. It was quite a long email, but any, any comments on that? Yeah, I think, uh, sure. Uh, I think uh, there's probably, as is often the case with Scripture, there are multiple fulfillments. I think the woman that brought forth the man-child, is, is, there are two things there. One, of course, is Mary, the Virgin Mary. Second is the nation of Israel. Uh, Mary went to Egypt when the, uh, Herod was going to kill the babies. And by the way, uh, they would have been about two years old at that time. They probably stayed in Bethlehem for two years after they went down for the birth. Uh, so the wise men came two years later, and they were in a house, not in the manger, but that's a minor point. Uh, but also, uh, the nation of Israel went down to Egypt and was protected, and actually that's where they grew and developed from 70 people to 2 million when Moses let them out. So, as is often the case with Scripture, there's a multiple fulfillment of that. But I still am not able to pinpoint in the Bible where people get this idea that a third of the angels followed Satan 
uh, shortly after the creation. I think it's pretty easy to demonstrate that Lucifer was created. That, uh, Ezekiel 28 tells us clearly twice he was created. Uh, Exodus 20, verse 11, and Exodus 31, 17 both say that God created everything in heaven and earth in six days, which means Lucifer being created was created during those six days. He did not exist before the creation. He did not fall between verse 1 and 2 like the gap theory says, because at the end of day 6, Genesis 1.31, God looked at everything and it was very good. And Ezekiel 28 tells us that Lucifer was in Eden until he, he, he sinned. Well, Eden wasn't even made till day 6. So certainly, that's, that's why those people who believe in that crazy gap theory idea, they try to say, well, there's two, two Edens. There's no scripture for that at all. Zero, none. They're making that up. Anyway, so my take on it is since uh, if Job 38 tells us that the angels rejoiced, or the sons of God rejoiced when they saw the foundations of the earth laid. The only way I can make it all fit is to say that that is probably talking about day three, when the dry land appeared. So the angels must have been made on day one or day two. Doesn't tell us. But uh, Lucifer and all the angels uh, rejoiced to see when God was going to do something in the habitable part of the earth. Um, so I think Lucifer fell from heaven maybe a hundred years after the creation. We don't know. All we know is Adam's 130 when Seth is born, and before that they had Cain and Abel, and before that they were out of the garden. So could have been 50 to 100 years in the garden perfect peace and harmony until Eve was deceived and Adam knew full well what he was doing. 1 Timothy chapter 2 says Eve was tricked but Adam was not deceived. Adam deliberately took up that fruit to save his wife just like Christ deliberately became sin to save us. Adam knew full well, man if I eat this uh, God's going to have to do to me whatever he does to Eve. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save her by becoming like her. And so Jesus took on our sin and took the judgment of God to save a great symbolism, typology there. But um, back to the point, I, I cannot figure out where anybody gets this idea of a third of the angels following Satan when he fell. I would be willing to argue that Satan fell way after the creation. And uh, was it a slow, gradual thing? He just decided he wanted to take over, or was it an instant thing? <laughs> we have the clue from Isaiah where he said, I will be like the Most High. You know, he wants to take over God's job. There's no question about that. But when did he get that attitude? I can't see it. And I'm wondering if this is the agape that writes to me with her family once in a while from Lithuania, or Latvia. Lithuania, I think it is. Yeah, or no, Estonia. Estonia in Europe. So if it is, uh, you got to teach me how to say hello or goodbye in Estonian uh, so I can say it, but... Uh, uh, anyway, thank you for writing. Probably several agapes in the world. Yeah, it's Isaiah 14 where Lucifer uh, fell from heaven. People can read that. And, but yeah, if somebody can figure out where this third comes from other than Revelation, which appears to be future yet, I, I'd like to see it. All right, good question. Thank you. No, thank you. That was very interesting. I, I've, uh, I've, I didn't know that it was a future, and uh, I've never really thought about you know the scriptural evidence for a third of the angels following Satan, but I've always heard that. That's very interesting. All right, uh, Pastor Hoven, this next question comes from Davey, and uh, we, we praise God for Davey. He's written in many questions. He writes, Hello, Kent. I heard you say something about the, sup about the supplements. What kind of supplements would you recommend for people to take? And he also has a second question as well. Call there. This call is from the Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office. The human body needs all kinds of things to function properly. And you, you could study your car uh, and how what your car needs based upon the deficiencies. Like if it's always pulling to the right, you could say, well, I must have low air in my tire. But it'd be smarter to just go around and check the tires and keep them right. Don't wait till you get a deficiency. You can wait till the engine starts knocking to say, oh, wow, time to check the oil. Well, that's true. You could do that, but that'd be smarter to just check it and change it, you know, like you're supposed to. And you can study the human body based on deficiencies, uh, which is needs nothing, like for instance if you get cramps in your calf muscles of your leg, you're probably low in calcium, or at least you're not digesting the calcium you're getting for whatever reason. If you're getting hangnails, or uh, uh, gums bleed easily, you're probably low in vitamin C. That's a deficiency sign, but 
can give your body what it needs, and in theory, you can get it all from the food. In reality, the farmers have learned how to raise the food faster and make it look better and get more per acre, but the nutritional value has dropped, and that's a whole field of study that other people are going to have to take on. I'm interested in it. I do plan to live in this body the rest of my life, <laughs> and I want it to run as good as possible, but I'm not going to, not going to go chase, chase rabbits and go off into a nutritional uh, ministry. God's called me to something else, but... Uh, there are many, many good people involved. Bill Sardi in California is one of the smartest guys I know on the subject. His uh, website is knowledgeofhealth.com. And uh, as far as supplements, you can add, that's just something you add to your diet, assuming you're not getting enough in your food. Uh, so you supplement your diet, you add to it. And there are three types of vitamins. There are live, there, there are uh, organic but dead, and there are synthetic uh, illustration might be your body needs a certain vitamin, so they want to get it out of this food, so they cook it to get it out. They boil it down. Well, the cooking process killed it. And while it's it's uh, organic, it's it's natural, it's dead. Uh, it's like getting bodies out of the mortuary and say, wow, let's put them in our church. And the church is filled with natural, organic people, but they're dead. <laughs> yeah. uh, or you can fill your church with dummies out of the store windows, mannequins. Well, they're synthetic. Mm. Or you can fill your church with live, breathing people. That's the real <laughs> thing you want. And so I think maybe an over, oversimplification, but vitamins seem to come in those three categories. And uh, vitamins, and, and you've got to be careful, you know, how is it processed? Where did it come from? What's the source? And that's a whole field of study that uh, is interesting to me, but not a rabbit trail I'm going to chase down. Okay? No, very, very good. Uh, no, very good. Uh, and there, there, we've got some good friends, too. Uh, like I mentioned before, Pastor Robert, I, I don't ever go to the doctor, and we've got some good friends at church that uh, have a lot of good uh, nutritional information as well, so we praise God for people that uh, study that and share that knowledge. Uh, question number two from Davey. What are some of the best ways to break the ice to lead others to Christ? I want to help people pull out, I want to help pull people out of the fire, and most of the time people will change the subject when they know where the conversation is leading. I don't know how to remedy this, and others, I believe, have the same problem. Thank you very much for strengthen, strengthening the church with your videos. Uh, I pray for you continually. God bless you, Pastor Hovind from Davy. Well, thank you, Davy. That's always a, a, a question of how do I get started in this conversation to witness to people. The Bible says a man's gift maketh room for him. When you give something to somebody, they're more likely to, you know, give you time or, you know, give you time to talk to them. Like, I'll sit here at the table, like I did a minute ago, and make bookmarkers for people, my world-famous three-dimensional bookmarkers. The guys just love them, but I'm almost out, by the way, Rudy, so okay. if anybody wants to help, tell them, get some, from my, get some from my son, get the original ones, they're sharper. Cut them up for me, please. We don't have any way to cut them here. Slice them up. And mail me three or four or five with each letter. Because I go through them like water. I just made six. I think I got ten left, and I'm done. So, but anyway, so when I give somebody a bookmarker, they then will sit and listen to me explain the gospel. Or you give them a gospel track. Ray Comfort has some fabulous, really cool tracks. Not just the generic ones that are a lot of words and no pictures that probably nobody's going to read. Uh, Jack Chick, the Chick Tracks, Chick.com, those, C-H-I-C-K, those are fabulous to give out. So if you walk up and hand somebody something and give, or give them a DVD, give them one of my DVDs. Make that your ministry, please. Become a video missionary. Make all the copies you want. When you hand one to somebody and say, hey, I'd like you to watch 10 minutes of this. It's about creation and dinosaurs. Like, what? Yeah, this guy believes the Bible and believes dinosaurs lived with man. You ought to watch this. See what you think. You just never know how that, well, getting the conversation started is the way to go. Another thing you might consider is read that story. Rudy, did you find that one about the George Street preacher? Yes, sir. We put that up on uh, YouTube. That's a very good, uh, very moving. <clears throat> that guy gave out 10, ten tracks a day for years and yep. never heard any result. Yes. You just don't know when you're planting seeds. It's like Johnny Appleseed. Uh, just plant seeds as you go. Somebody else will come along later and reap the, reap the harvest. So you don't need to see the results necessarily, Davey. Uh, but it's nice, it's nice to, you know, um, start a ministry. <laughs> there are all kinds of different ways to evangelize, and whatever suits you. Gospel tracks are great. Some people like to knock on doors. I have knocked on thousands of doors. You have 60 seconds remaining. You could set up a, 
learn how to make my bookmark or set at a table someplace at any place. Go to the mall and order a Pepsi and sit down and start making bookmarkers. And people say, oh, wow, can I have one of those? Sure. And you could, I guarantee you could stay there all day, every day for months and get thousands of people to listen to you present the gospel. That could be a full-time ministry just making these little bookmarkers. Mm. So, uh, Rudy, I get the instructions, and I, I need a bunch more. Then. Yes, yes, I'm going to try to. I'm going to try to. Yes, 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 sir, we do have more, and I'm going to try to get you more bookmarkers, too. Okay, we get the one straight from my son. They're the original. They're not faded and everything. And, okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, I'll call right back. Okay. All right, that's Pastor Hovind, uh, April the 11th. Every call is precious. We have uh, 36 days. And uh, send me your Bible questions, folks. Creation, evolution questions, too. Uh, go to some of these atheists and uh, get some of their questions. And we'll have Dr. Hovind answer some of them. call from Ken Hovind. An inmate at the Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office. This call will be recorded and monitored. Your advance pay account balance is... $21.02. For customer assistance, billing inquiries, or to block future calls, dial 1-877-650-4249. To hear the cost of this call, press 8 now. To accept this call, press 5 now. To decline this call, hang up. This call is subject to monitoring and recording. Do not use three-way or call waiting features during this call. Thank you for using Global Tail Link. Hey, man, brother, this is so helpful to me. Thank you for doing this. No <laughs> problem. No, it's, a, it's a huge blessing for us as well, and everybody, everybody that hears it loves loves to hear these things, and uh, it's just a, it's, it's a good discussion. Uh, we love talking about the Bible, the Word of God, and creation and evolution. It's just a, it's a blessing for everybody involved, Pastor Owen. Um, Amen. All right. The next, the next question we got, sir. Uh, I just share a, 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 a situation that has happened, and maybe we can get your counsel on it. But you have a quite a, a, a background of people that have come together, and you know we get, we gather together on a email list, and it's called Two Peter Three, uh, the Google groups, and we share information about all kinds of different things, and you know a lot of different backgrounds. Some of them are independent, fundamental, bat, uh, chicken eat, chicken eating Baptist, and some of them are not. Uh, right, a lot of people just from a lot of different backgrounds. But uh, one of the things that's come up is uh, you know uh, because there is you know we don't necessarily focus on doctrine. We feel like we've you know the Lord has put a burden in our heart. We would like to see you free. We realize it's a much bigger issue than just Ken Hovind. And we, if we don't stand up for you, who's going to stand up for us, right? When when our time comes, when our time comes to get in prison. But the point I'm trying to make, Pastor Hovind, is some of the folks in the group, as an example, they like to uh, refer to Jesus as Yeshua Hamashiach, right? I think even Pastor Wiley Drake does that from time to time. Although I've heard him say Jesus quite a bit. Uh, there's some folks in the group that have a huge problem with that. It's like, but for me, Pastor Hovind, it's not like you said we can disagree without being disagreeable. Uh, I don't make it an issue of like breaking fellowship if somebody doesn't use the name Jesus if they use the word Yeshua and that's the way they were raised I figure you know I wouldn't personally use that uh, name uh, like I've, I think I've heard you say in the past I don't recognize who really who that is but uh, one of some of the folks and I got to say Hannah has been we love Hannah uh, other folks in the in the group besides just Hannah use that as well like I said Pastor Wiley Drake uh, they're doing a lot of good work we are very very grateful uh, any just words of advice or counsel, like as we have differences of opinion when it comes to biblical doctrine, uh, that sometimes we got to put aside our. In the Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office. And I, I don't mean to be so prolonged. I don't mean to be so prolonged on the question, but I just want to make sure you have the background. Of, we got to put aside our biblical doctrine from time to time, and not to say that we shouldn't have strong beliefs. But you know, we're, we're coming together with a, a bigger purpose here, and that's because God has put a, a, a burden in our heart to, to work. And, you know, try to free you from prison. And, and, and it's bigger than just you. It's standing up for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have real enemies, right? Real enemies that really want to do really, really bad things to Christians in general. So we spend a lot of time arguing with each other. Any, any counsel on this whole topic, uh, you know, how we should get along and, and how we can better, uh, you know, work, work with one another? Well, yeah, a couple of thoughts. Uh, first of all, during World War II, we were allies with the French, the English, and the Russians, of all people. Very, very different. But we had a bigger common enemy, like you said. We had the Germans and the Japanese, and we got to, you, you got to come together and disregard some of your differences so that you can fight this common enemy. Once that's defeated, then we'll go to the other. <laughs> to me, the, the name... Yeah, the name, the whole argument about the Yeshua and all that stuff is, is a distraction and is minor. Uh, if you take the assumption, uh, the position that I do, that the King James is the preserved Word of God, well then it's, it's a no-brainer. His name is Jesus. 
Now, Yeshua is not mentioned in the King James any place. So I don't use that. I don't object to people that do. They can do whatever they want. But it, it sounds a little strange to me. Why use a different language? It's true. Yeshua is the Hebrew name for Jesus. Okay, no argument there. But I don't speak Hebrew. I speak English. So I use the English, and I trust the King James Version of the Bible. I guess it would be like if somebody, I've got friends who are Spanish or Mexican or from you know, Spanish descent. If they're reading my Bible, and every time it says Peter, they stick Pedro in there. I would wonder, why are you doing that? A, it doesn't say Pedro. Uh, and this is just kind of, why, why don't we use Swahili? Why are we using Spanish, you know? So why stick a Hebrew word in when the English word Jesus does just fine? So to me, it, it's a distraction, and I won't, you know, get after anybody for using that. But uh, I, they will write to me and, you know, uh, and use the word Yeshua, and I write back and say, Jesus. I, <laughs> you know, so it's, I'm not going not gonna to get off on that fight. It's Amen. Not, I don't speak Hebrew, and I don't speak Greek, and uh, so uh, English is fine. Amen. So we have, we have a bigger bigger enemy to slay, and this would certainly be a distraction to separate people that are not necessary, totally unnecessary to, dis to separate people. Over. Amen. Amen. And, and I, I hope Hannah doesn't mind me calling her name out specifically, but we love Hannah. She is such a blessing, Pastor Hovind, and she's uh, taken up the project of editing the kennel, and uh, she's the one who... Uh, has uh, you know uh, sung that song uh, "Broken Hallelujah"? That wasn't that was a cover, but uh, she's been such a blessing, and, and uh, we just praise God for her. All right, uh, the next question, sir, is uh, regarding Common Core in the educational system, and that's come up. Uh, you know this uh, uh, Pensacola Christian College, I think that was re uh, led by Rebecca Horton or her husband or something like that. They've they've kind of aligned with Common Core to some extent. Any thoughts on Common Core and whether that's a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know enough about it. I know there has been a lot of stuff against that, uh, speaking out against the Common Core curriculum. The idea is all schools teach in the same thing, and I think the, 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 at least the cover story is it's going to make it easier for kids to transfer district to district or even state to state if all states all across the country use a Common Core curriculum. The big danger, of course, is letting a big, big bureaucracy, a federal government or somebody else, decide what's taught. Uh, that to me is a giant danger. Get them out of it. Uh, one, th one thought I had on uh, editing the kennel, if you could ask her to check all the links, because that was you know, like five years, six years ago, and some of those links uh, that I referenced in the kennel may no longer be working. Okay. I will absolutely tell them. But no, there's other, there's other people who deal with the curriculum issue. Uh, and I've been out of circulation for eight and a half years, so I don't remember. But I used to speak at uh, homeschool conventions all the time, and uh, there were people who had booths set up dealing just with that. Uh, I can't recall them now, but uh, uh, yeah, so they're, they're, that's somebody else's battle to fight. I am a little nervous about the whole concept of a Common Core curriculum where somebody in Washington, D.C. is deciding what your kids learn right. in San Diego and in Seattle and Miami. That. The federal government has no business being involved in education at all, at any level. Read the Constitution. It tells what they're supposed to do, and then our Amendment Number 10 says nothing else. Nothing else. So the Common Core concept concerns me. But as far as the details, I don't have an answer. <coughs> okay. No, thank you for that. And there are many of us that view Common Core as... Uh like you said, the government's way to uh, slip in uh, a controlled uh, educational agenda. Uh, so, Pastor Hovind, the other question I got is, uh, there was a movie that was came out probably while you've been in prison. It's called Indoctrination, and it deals with the question of whether a Christian family should send their Christian children into the public school system so that, so that they can be salt and light of the earth and share the gospel with the secular world or whether uh, the Christian family should choose to homeschool their children because uh, it, it could actually endanger the souls of their young children, sending them into the, you know, the secular world. And uh, Any thoughts about whether it's right uh, to homeschool or to send our children into the public school system because it, it can have such a negative impact on our children uh, to be exposed to a lot of the, I would just call it outright wickedness of the, of the public school system. Correct. It's a, it's a very sad thing when you have to send children off to war yeah. in any country. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the adults ought to be fighting this battle. So as a general principle, I'm totally against sending any kids to public school. Uh, sometimes you have to, financial reasons or whatever, but if it's at all possible, the idea that I'm going to send them there to influence them for good, 
on extremely rare occasions that does happen. And some kids go through public school and become stronger for it. I went to public school uh, through high school, the first year and a half of college, uh, and uh, it, it made me stronger in my f Look at the simple statistics. The, the, the casualty rate is incredible. The number of kids that, you know, that are influenced for it. It's like putting a good apple in a bushel of f apples saying, here, let's see if this good one influences these rotten ones to become clean again. It just doesn't work that way, okay? I understand we need salt and light, but um, my, my short answer to the question would be, if possible, absolutely do not do that. If there's no way you can avoid it for whatever reason, then make sure that kid is well grounded and you watch like a hawk who they bring home for friends and who they write to and text and everything else. <laughs> And you watch their curriculum like a hawk, because they introduce unbelie unbelievable stuff at the first grade level. Romans uh, 16, 19 said, I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. Why are we teaching some of these things to kindergarten, first grade, second grade? What is wrong with us? It is, it is not the school. The public schools are not what they used to be 40, 50 years ago. They're just not. And so if at all possible, keep your kids out. That's my humble and uh, unbiased opinion. Okay. No, very good, very good. Thank you. I, I, uh, I think that's some very wise words there. Did you ask him about uh, Hannah's question here about the kennel? No. Uh, go ahead, babe. It says uh, number one. How does it look on my? Oh, uh, I must say that the way Kent's talking in this intro is as if the author name remain the same. Think I should change it all back? Also, about half of the page title said Kent Hovind, while the rest said Elijah Green. Oh, uh, I think you had given a new intro, and she wanted to know if the intro was to replace the old intro or to go in conjunction with it. I told her to use her best judgment, and we would just get you the next the next revision, and you would tell us. Do you, do you remember? Yeah, it was to replace the intro. Okay. It was to replace it totally. Okay. But go ahead. It's been too long, and I've got to see it in writing. So send it to Ernie or Randall, and they can mail it to me, and I get it next day. Okay. Well, she's still she's still working on the next release, and as, as soon as she gets us something, uh, we'll make sure we mail it to you, and then we can do the next uh, revision. No, I mean, I don't, I don't mean the whole book. I mean just the intro. Have her type up that, oh. and I'll look at it. Oh, okay, okay. We can do that very quickly. Okay, very good, very good. I'll, uh, I'll make sure that we do that. Okay, uh, the next question comes from Perry, and Perry writes, uh, Dear Mr. Hoven, Perry from Canada, wants to know if you think the Internet or television is mentioned in Scripture through prophecy. I think the only one verse that pops into my mind quickly on that is the two witnesses in Revelation uh, 12 or 9, 10, 11, 12, somewhere in there, where it says the whole world saw them at the same time. To me, that's pretty clear, some kind of prophecy. of like the, it's Chapter 11, there it is. It says, the whole world saw their dead bodies. Uh, Revelation chapter 11. Uh, interesting. I don't think that that was even possible when this was written. Uh, so that may, I mean, it may be a stretch, but I don't think it's much of a stretch to say that Revelation 11 verse is probably a, uh, telling us about some kind of system where everybody can watch at the same time which would be internet or TV or something like that. I can't think of any others real quickly. <coughs> okay. No, thank you, Pastor Robin. I, the one, one verse that came to mind is uh, there was something about the image of the beast. There was uh, life breathed into the image or, or something like that. Do you remember a verse? Does that ring a bell? Um, it's something about the... Oh, the yeah, he makes the beast it makes the beast come to yes. Like makes the beast come to life, which might be artificial artificial intelligence kind of stuff. Yes, I we'll have to wait and see what actually happens there, but yeah, could be. Don't know. Okay, all right. No, thank you, Pastor Owen. The next question is from an atheist, and the atheist writes: If humans and dinosaurs roam the earth at the same time, why don't we ever find their bones in the same places? Well, how do you know they don't? I think human bones and dinosaur bones have been. This call is from the Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office. <coughs> I don't think you'll find any place in the fossil record. Search the, search the record and see, have human and chicken bones ever been found together in the same place? Mm. <laughs> I don't think they have, so therefore that would prove humans and chickens did not live at the same time. There you go. 
Yeah, wouldn't it? By that same Yes, market. that's right. That's right. That's oh, right. Oh, there's chickens all over the world. <laughs> the reason human and chicken bones aren't found together is because humans don't hang out with chickens very much. Okay? <laughs> and so an animals tend to stay, stay with their own kind. So first I would say they probably, that I, I think they certainly have been found together. Joe Taylor up there in Crosby, then Texas would be a guy to ask, or Carl Baugh in Glen Rose, Texas, south of you there, would know about that. Uh, there's been a lot of research on this, but I don't think they have to be found together to prove that they live together. There's artwork and loads of stuff in the cryptozoology field showing dinosaur man had knowledge of dinosaurs. The Angkor Wat Temple in Cambodia, built uh, in about the year 1100, out in the middle of the jungle, kind of like Indiana Jones, one of those abandoned... You have 60 seconds remaining. On the side of one of the doors is a stegosaurus as plain as day. Uh, contact Joe Sweet up in uh, Oregon. I don't have his website, but uh, he's been there, got pictures of it, made a mold of it. So I think there's loads of evidence man has lived with dinosaurs. But I would go back to the chicken and human bones found together. Show me some evidence where they've been found together in the fossil record. Okay. Very good. No, thank you, Pastor. And watch my video number three. Very good. No, thank you, Pastor Hoven. Uh, no questions, brother. Should I call? I, 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 think, I think I'll have to gather up some more for, for tomorrow, yeah. Sounds great. I'll call you tomorrow and I have a sermon ready to bring. We're, we're looking forward to it. We're looking forward to that. God bless you, Pastor Hoven. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Bye-bye. All right. God bless. Bye-bye. All right. That was Pastor Hoven, April the 11th, and um, I need some Bible questions. Uh, R-U-D-D-A-V-I-S at Yahoo.com, and um, send me some uh, creation evolution questions. He really, really loves those about the fossil record, carbon dating, uh, the strata, Anything about geology, um, uh, send me that kind of stuff. I think he loves that stuff as well. Uh, R-U-D-D-A-V-I-S at, D -A -V -I -S at Yahoo.com. God bless every one of you guys. Uh, let's make as much noise, shine as much light, and uh, do what the Lord leads us to do, uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, we got an innocent man in prison, been there eight years, and they're trying to put him in prison for the rest of his life. I don't know about you, but that makes me pretty angry.